What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome to another review and we've gone from being unbeaten in 15 or so games to losing our last two games on the bounce and this one doesn't really feel like the Everton game. The Everton game I was frustrated by the way that we had lost mainly because there was it was a fine margin of millimetres. If Reese James's shot was a bit further to the right it would have gone in and we would have equalised. Mason Mount had a bit of an earlier dip his chip would have gone in and we would have equalised. Stuff like that. This game it doesn't feel like that. This game we genuinely have thrown it away. I think this was such bad game management in the second half. I'm going to criticise Frank Lampard as well because I do think he plays part of the reason why we lost this game. It's, it's such a stupid game to lose and this is going to be the sort of game that we look back on at the end of the season and think we could have been one place higher than we are now if we had won this game. This game was poor but before I start this video, as usual, if you haven't done it already, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button as well. Hit that hat trick because if we had that we would have won today, but we didn't and yeah This one is jarring, but uh, The lineup was fine. I understood moving Kai Havertz into a place where he's more comfortable in the natural in the number eight position made sense and Pulisic on the left as well was amazing But the prop the two problems were that we was one of them that we changed Christian Pulisic I don't get the one thing that this game showed me right if I want to look at it from a positive light Is that Christian Pulisic should be playing on the left not Timo Werner Werner if we have to play him on the wings play him on the right hand side Because at least then he can go forward beat a player and he's on his stronger foot to whip a crossing If he's not in a prime position to shoot this game was a perfect example of it the second half Moving Christian Pulisic back into the left, for what? It took away half of our attack, our good attacking quality, probably all of it if I'm being real, if I'm still being a little bit biased. And it just made v Werner even more insufficient on the left hand side. This game just exposed it. He's good on the he's good on the left if he roams in there from the strike position. If you play him there on the left hand side, He's not at his best. He's at his best when he runs into space. He's at his best when he's got a clear line through on goal. He doesn't have any of that from the left-hand side. And he's also being played onto his weaker left foot. He's being forced at the most to do one-twos and everything like that. And his link-up plays good. I will always give him credit for that. But even today, it was off part. It was off part. And... With Werner, it really screams confidence with him right now. He doesn't look like his most confident self. He don't look like the same player he was at RB Leipzig. And that's nothing against the player because I know the player can come good, but he's being played out of position. Another issue, Kai Havertz. He's at his best in the number 10 role and this one I understand with Lampard a little bit more because we played the 4-2-3-1 formation a couple times And we had other issues in other areas around the field with what's his, with the transition from defense to attack being poor from the uh, From the two DMs and us also having other issues with the center backs just constantly making mistakes in those positions So I understand why we're not playing in that role and I do think Kai Havertz is also a slow starter. We have seen, and I've said so many times on this channel, that he is a lot more he is a lot more of a bigger threat towards the second half of the season compared to the first half of the season. And the stats are just a massive proof of that. But he had a disappearing act today. And he could have been substituted a lot earlier. But the one biggest issue with Frank Lampard, and this is from someone who is still deep Lampard in, and I'm not saying Lampard out or anything like that, but his biggest problem is against the bigger sides, he is too cautious. He makes these substitutions way too late. It was another game where it took to the 70th minute for us to make a substitution. Right substitutions, we finally brought on Mateo Kovacic, but he could have come on at half time. It screams the Spurs game and Tammy Abraham, we should have been subbed off at the same time as well, but we didn't do it. But they come on too late and there's barely any time for us to have an impact we got done by wolves we got done by wolves on the counter it's jarring it is what it is and it's that dickhead pedro neto that scored the winner as well after trying to shamelessly go down for a penalty but we have to firm the l on our chest i think it was poor game management that lost us the game as soon as the equalizer came in our heads just dropped and we weren't the same team but we were fading away towards the second half anyway i do think fatigue plays a bit of a part in this too but it's not an excuse because wolves also played on the weekend and they played us as well so it's not too much of an excuse but i'm still saying fatigue was a factor for this sort of result today chilwell looked absolutely drained in the second half yet again Timo Werner, he looked drained as well, but it was also a confidence thing and it was also just 
an awful performance. I thought the Everton game was his worst performance in a Chelsea shirt, but this one might have really just topped it. And the sec the first goal, I, I understand. And Mendy really could have got hands to that a lot quicker if we're being real about that. And I can accept that because every time Kepa concedes a goal, I will sit there and tell you that Edward Mendy could have reached it. So with the same energy, I'm going to tell you that Edward Mendy should have reached for that goal. He got a fingertip to it. He should have got a lot closer to it. Near post as well. He should have done a lot better. It is what it is. Chilwell also got done for the first goal as well. But you take it on the chin. It was a good move and good play from Podence. So I can respect that second goal why the fuck did we overcommit like that why did we overcommit like that because in the spurs game we weren't that stupid everyone was saying we were playing too pragmatic in that game we were smart against spurs we didn't overcommit because that was playing right into their hands why did we overcommit and put both full backs forward towards the end of the game so we only had two players at the back what a surprise Wolves counter-attack does. You don't think that's that? That's not their game plan? I don't know if that was tactical. I don't know if that was players letting their head down. But what the fuck was that? Because that's what cost us the game. And now the Spurs-Liverpool game means nothing if it barely meant anything after the loss to Everton. People are saying we were mocking it, saying we were title contenders and... I don't even think we were mocking it saying, saying we were title contenders. I still think we're title contenders. Yes, we've lost our last two games. I'm telling you, this is going to be the most open Premier League season in years. We can make up this ground. Spurs will drop points. Liverpool will drop points. I can guarantee it. And I do think if we can fix up and we can get ourselves right again... Who's to say we can't get back into the title race? It really is everyone's game for about four to five. Hell, maybe up to eight, nine teams. Because the fact is, if five teams win in midweek, we drop to ninth place. Which is surprising in itself. But all that does is tell you how open the Premier League season is. So, the title race really isn't over. I can understand fans being a very reactionary and saying that that's it. We should focus on a top four race or something like that. No, we're not focusing on a top four race. I'm not doing that. But it's annoying. It is massively annoying. It's another game against a top six side that we struggled. I also think we need to get a bit more of a plan B. Like, we, we can cuss out Arteta all we want for the crossing and everything like that. But all we really did today was spam crosses. I think both the I think that's also because both the attacking eights didn't really help us today. I thought Mason Mount was poor. I thought Kai Havertz was poor today. And like I said earlier, should have been shipped off earlier. Our best midfielder was N'Golo Kante by a long shot. Defensively as well, we looked surprisingly suspect. And Thiago Silva, it wasn't his best game. I thought his passing was a little bit sloppy today. Uh, Kurt Zuma as well. <sighs> Yeah, to, actually, no, to be honest, I'll give Kurt Zuma credit. No, 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 no. Second half, his passing was very, very suspect. Reese James, I think, was the best player out of the lot, and that's just probably the best out of a bad bunch, and it just sounds the same thing as last season, but we really just have to take it on the chin and move on. This is the thing. I've, I, I, if I have to take one blame to it, I'd go for Frank Lampard because... I don't think I don't think Pulisic should have been put onto the right onto the left hand side. I mean onto the right hand side towards the end of the match. That was complete completely counteracting any sort of positive play that we had. Pulisic was probably our best attacker going forward. He was completely doing them up the entire match, him and Ben Chilwell. They couldn't handle the pair of them. A lot of good crosses were coming from that left-hand side. We had a lot of good play coming from that left-hand side. And that's half the reason why I'm saying Ben Chilwell didn't really have a terrible match. He just faded away because he was a little bit fatigued. We were dominating them on that left-hand side. And then we changed it up. Why did we change it up? That makes no sense to me, and it just completely killed the game for us. But game management just needs to improve, and I do think we need to find a plan B. I'm not going to be reactionary and say we need to change formation. I think this is the first slip-up that we've had in this formation. And are we really going to say go back to the 4-2-3-1 after the way we were playing earlier on in the season? The only thing I could use as a reason for it, maybe is because when we had Edward Mendy in it, we beat Crystal Palace 4-0. That was probably our most dominant performance in the 4-2-3-1 formation. But I still think there's struggles, and I still think against tougher sides, we struggle with that formation. If we play it, at the very least, we'll probably get the best out of Kai Havertz, and it will be perfect timing as well if the game's coming up. But it's jarring, and it makes the next two games worrying, and it's two London derbies. West Ham at home, Arsenal away. We cannot lose to West Ham three games in a row. 
I am telling you that now. These these dickheads will make shirts about it. They will make mugs about it. They will bring DVDs about it. Everything they will do. They will they will hype it up so much. They'll steal leads and stop crime. Frank Lampard chant and everything like that. We can't lose to West Ham. And then there's Arsenal. Swear down in this form, we cannot lose to Arsenal. You know. Like, we're all, I'm personally finished. Like, I might as well not show my face on social media for the rest of 2020 if we lose. But we cannot lose to Arsenal. They are genuinely banter FC. We cannot drop points in these two games. We should be getting max points. These games are so much more important now to us. Please, let's just go in with a correct mindset. Come correct, Chelsea. I'm begging you. But guys, this is the end of my review. I'd usually do player ratings, but I want to have a level head for it. So I'm going to drop that tomorrow instead. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said. But until then, take care, like and subscribe. And yeah, up the chills.